Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Michelle, and today I'm joining in on the Show and Tell Club hosted by Abby from Rooted and Rest and Jessica from the Waldock Way. This is an open club for homeschoolers, and I think it's a wonderful way to meet new homeschoolers and also cover a variety of topics and get some new information. So I'll be sure to link the playlist down below. But today's topic is plan with me. So I'm gonna show you guys how I prep and plan for the week. So I'm gonna turn my camera around and show you how I do it. All right, I'm gonna give you a quick overview. I have all my books and various things I'm gonna to need to prep for this, but we're gonna go through how I fill out my planner and how I prep for all of these things. All right, as you can see, I have a, a regular teacher happy planner here. So what I do, you can see I filled some things out on the planner already. For example, I have our meals already listed because you'll come to see on Friday, I actually do my meal planning for the next week and I write it down. So we have breakfast, lunch, and dinner for Monday through Friday, and then for Saturday and Sunday, I just have dinners. This makes it easy when I meal plan. This makes it easier when I make lunches in the morning. It's just one less thing I have to remember. So although it seems like a lot of upfront work, through the week, it makes things go so much easier and smoother. Also, if my husband's home, he knows, you know, pull this out, make this if I'm busy. So, that's the first thing I do is I put all of our meals for the week down. Then, of course, I will go to our monthly calendar for the week and see what I need to write down. And I also did that already. You can see preschool story time at the library. I get a monthly CSA from a farm that I need to pick up. I do my grocery shopping on Saturday morning. There's Lego Club. And I have to prep for a Sunday school lesson because I'm a Sunday school teacher, co-op. This is the first day of Sunday school. And then this is usually when I do my school prep Sunday afternoon. So those are the things that are already filled out. So let's finish filling this out together. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do up here is this is for my errands and things I need to do. This is this first box on the top here. So, obviously for Monday morning, my errand is preschool story time. Tuesday, Wednesday, the rest of the week, I actually leave this for chores, specific chores I'm working on for the week. So for example, for Tuesday and Wednesday, my chore I take care of is I dust and wipe one level of our house. So this week, will be upstairs. You know, I'm using just a regular pen. <laughs> I do own the friction erasable pens and occasionally I do use them to remember important things, but most of the time I just use a regular black pen. Also, I don't use washi tape. I don't do any of the decorations. For me, this is just to get the information down. It doesn't matter to me if it looks pretty or not. So Tuesday, that's what I take care of. Wednesday, I clean the fridge out, make sure there's no expiring food. I also lice all, all the highly touched surfaces of our house, so doorknobs, faucet handles, light switches, I make sure that's sanitized for the week. Thursday, I rotate one week I'll do sheets, the next week I'll do a deep cleaning. So this last Thursday I actually did sheets. So what I'll be doing this Thursday is vacuuming out the dryer vent and the vent that leads outside. Because if you didn't know, that's a big fire hazard, so it's good to vacuum out that vent that leads outside. So I'll be taking care of the dryer vent. Friday, I always do the bathrooms. We have two and a half baths, so I make sure everything's cleaned in there, garbages are cleaned out, all that. And I also have a farm CSA pickup that day. And then Saturday, I have Kroger and so on. So that's the first thing to get through my chores for the week. The next block you see here will be my four and a half year old, almost five year old's kindergarten work, her core work. So I just put her initial and core work. And what she does for that is she has a calendar that she takes care of. She has a writing notebook. And of course, if you wanna see any of this stuff, I'll link up here, um, what we use, she has math and she has her all about reading. So that's all I write for that. And then for the rest of the week, I just put her initial core work. 
because it is the exact same thing every day of the week. So next would be my eight-year-old's core work. So for her first initial core work, and she will do wordly wise her vocab. She will do her writing. And again, I'll link what I use for her. And she will do her math. She does her math with me, but these two she does independently. And again, I'll do the exact same thing, right, for the rest of the week. I do not feel the need to write this out for everything. I don't need to check off boxes. I do not have requirements where I need to show what she's doing. So that's all I write. This little period of time is usually lunch. All right, so after lunch, we will have my eight-year-old's work. So after this chunk, my kindergartner, four and a half-year-old, almost five-year-old is done for the day. She can join us for our electives later, but she, her core work is done. So my eight-year-old has finished her reading and math and writing and all that. So after lunch, she still has to do English language arts. So for that, she does lightning literature. So I just abbreviate LL. And then Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, she also does Michael Clay Thompson. So I will write lightning lit. And then for Wednesday, she'll have lightning lit and Michael Clay Thompson. And it just keeps going. And then she will actually only have Michael Clay Thompson on Fridays because Lightning Lit is a four day program. So after that, this is my torch light box. If you didn't see what we're using here, we're using level two torch light. So I leave this box and this box for filling out my torch light stuff. And again, all I do for that is I get out the torchlight calendar, go to my current lesson, and it's pretty much mapped out for me. There are a few things that I do differently though. So, for example, I do not do the vocab spell book. My daughter does wordly wise, and I think that is enough. We also do not do the geography that this program provides. To me, it it's just busy work and it doesn't really help. So we actually sub out that for core knowledge, geography, and I will do a separate review and flip through of this. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail about how I actually do that, but I will just write CK geography. Same with science. We do not do the science program that's recommended for this. And that's just a personal choice. We covered a lot of the topics that are for this year already. So again, we just sub out core knowledge science for that. And we actually only do that on Thursdays and Fridays. So I'll just write core knowledge science. So getting back to this, I have my weekly list here, and then I just have to transfer some of that information. For example, I know we will be doing fortunately milk for our literature read aloud. So every week we'll have milk as a start. And this is just so I can quickly look over it to see what we'll be covering or if there's anything I need to grab really quick. So the next thing we will be doing is Curiosity Chronicles. I'll do what chapter we are on. We are in chapter seven. And again, for that, all I do is we have the audiobook, audiobook version of this, but what I will do for prep is we have the activity guide as well. So I will go through this and pick out any activities that we have to do for the week. So we usually have that and an activity. And then after that, we will be doing, it looks like, uh, two truths and a lie. And that will be chapter two. So this is 
just Monday's torchlight work. Not too bad. And we will also finish with core knowledge geography. So I'll do the same thing here. I will look at Tuesday's schedule. Quickly write down what I need to do. And that's exactly, it's not too difficult. So we'll do our read aloud. We have a poem that we are working on. So poetry, I will write the page number down and we will actually be working on that for the entire week. And that's just so I can quickly look at this and know what page number we're at. So after poetry, we will do again, the two truths, chapter two. Now with that, there is a specific log that you use. So I know for that day we will do a log or actually let's just do that we'll flip the log for that and same here we'll do two truths and then finish the log and then we'll go over to wednesday again it's the read the book poetry um, youtube video and child through time book that is page 18 to 21. all right so we go up to thursday we will have our normal stuff we have a comic book project Oop, thursday we have a comic book project and then we will start our ck site and we'll come over here. We actually will not have that then because we will finish the book by then. We will do our poetry. We will do some grammar work. We will do a medieval project. And then we will finish our CK science. This is usually a two step, two day program. And then We'll finish Friday by doing social justice unit. So there's actually less to do on Fridays because my kindergartner does not have math that day. My eight year old does not have English language arts that day because it's a four week program. So she has a little bit of Michael Clay Thompson, but <clears throat> it leaves us a much larger chunk to do this. So that's a heavier day. And again, it was just quickly copying down a few notes of what we need and what we're doing for the week. So let's go back to specific things. So if we're looking at Monday, I have my kindergartner's core work, my eight-year-old's core work, her English language arts, what I need for torchlight. And again, for geography, what I do for these core knowledge units are, I actually make a separate schedule because they're pretty detailed. And I'll just write it down here. So all I need to do is reference back to core knowledge, geography schedule. Same with the science on Thursday and Fridays. I actually write down what we're doing for those days on my calendar that goes with this. And I will just reference back to it. So on Sunday, what I will actually do as part of my school prep is I will go through these different things. So for example, my kindergartner. I will go and read through her math lessons really quick. They have a good intro of what you're going to be doing for the week. I read over this, so just like a teacher, I believe in teacher prep. So I will read over, see if we need any specific manipulatives or anything like that. But I have a general idea of what the lesson is. That way when I go to teach it, I'm not reading it for the first time and it just goes a lot smoother. So I will make sure I go through that. And the nice thing about her all about reading is because her sister did this. Everything's already done. Everything is cut out. I can literally just flip this open, grab what I need and be done. And if you're curious how I organized that, I just got one of these accordion folders 
And if you can see here, every lesson is divided into a manila folder and I can just pull out what I need from that folder and it's all ready to go. And again, if you wanna see specific schedule, I will also link that above. I made a video on that. But same with my eight-year-old decor work. I will go through. See where we are in Michael Clay Thompson. This does. This is really just open and go. I don't have to do a lot. I just gotta make sure we have our bookmark where we need to go. With her lightning lit, I will go through the teacher's guide for the week. I don't read the comprehension questions ahead of time because I don't think that's necessary. But the specific grammar lesson and the composition work we'll be doing, I do go over this before I go through it with her. I read through it so I have a better understanding before I go to teach it. Same with math. I know a lot of people feel intimidated by dimensions, Singapore and dimensions math. Well, once you get a hang of it, it's really not that bad. So she's actually in her review section of it. So I will just read this over, see what activity we'll be doing, and glance over her sheets. So again, I'm just better prepared to teach that lesson and know how far we will get. For example, sometimes if the lesson's short, we will do the exercise pages that go with it. If it's a longer lesson or she's not grasping the concept as well, we'll save this for another day. But again, I will read over this for the week. So I know, for example, Monday we will be doing review. We may be doing this on Tuesday if this takes longer. But after that, I know we'll be starting a new week. And if that's the case, I need to read over it, see if I need anything, and it just gives me a better knowledge of what's going on before I try to teach it. So this it does take some time. I would say reading through everything, setting up my planner probably takes an hour, an hour and a half but it makes the week go so much smoother because I know what I'm teaching, I know what we're doing, and we can easily go from one thing to another. So I will go over those things before we start the week for Monday. So that is how I use my planner, how I set it up. It's simple, quick, and it gives me a better idea of how the week is gonna go and what I need to be doing when. So thank you for watching.